On the 99th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me the end of the Akron Tournament. Hello, Akron fans, and welcome. This is the final match of the 2013 Christmas Tournament, ending in April of 2014. Yeah, it, it's been like that. Anyway, to get a bit of what was going on, so... See that Cybernetic Pony and Gode were playing, they... Well, Gode won, then Zarani Pony went to fight Kaiten, and Kaiten actually ended up forfeiting. That was kind of what was holding it up. But now we have the finals, absolute finals, grand finals between Cybernetic Pony and Gode. And this is actually going to be a best of five, just to make that clear. This is going to be a best of five, not a best of three, or two bests of threes, as the bracket image would imply. No, it's going to be a best of five. And that means we're going to have... Quite a few matches going on here. The first match is going to be on Onyx Canyon, and just get right to it. it stuff is stuff. My computer's doing weird things. Come on. Not so hard, is it? Okay. Hold on, sorry one sec. I don't know what's going on here. Technical difficulties, I suppose. This normally doesn't happen. Okay, there we go. Got it. <sighs> right time to have that screw up. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony is starting out the north side of the map. Wait, no. Yeah, north side of the map. Starting the north side of the map as CISO, while Gode is starting out in the south side of the map as Grekim. On Onyx Canyon, which is a map I don't believe has ever actually been shown on here before. Though, I can go over briefly. It has, as you can see, the start locations in the northwest and southeast. Also has the expansion over the center west and center east, as well as an expansion down, more of a natural expansion here. Not a whole lot of crates. This is a pretty low econ map. There's very little money to be going around here, so I imagine this game's not going to last that long. Mostly going to be around the main bases. Maybe going to go out a bit. There's some choke points leading to the main base. Not the most defensible, but overall, there just aren't a whole lot of resources anyway, so I think that we're just going to see pretty quick games going here. Anyways, Saturday Pony is... Let's see what he's going for. Fairly standard opening here. Bearing in mind, this is using the latest version, so 6 LCRPs would be a little bit excessive. 5 should be enough. While Gore is, on the other hand, has not gotten any early Q Plasma. Normally... Or oftentimes you get early Q Plasma because you go for Octopod for defense, but it looks like he's in fact going for a proxy. At least, init no he's not, he's just scouting out. Looked like he was going for a proxy, but the one of the units is going over here. So I think I'll have to wait and see. He's jumped back a bit. We'll see what he's going with that. Nothing too out of the ordinary yet. Getting a 6 LCRP, so he's definitely focusing on early economy expansion. While Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, actually has moved a bit south. He's, I guess, checking if... Gode had expanded over here yet, and he has not. No one's expanded, really. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, does have 7 LCRP, so both players are pretty focused on Liquid Crystal. He's also getting some Lancers. Not as the one importer and hasn't used anything of it yet, but might want to get a couple more. Not yet, but he's probably going to get a couple more within the next minute or two. And Gode at the 218 mark, getting Q Plasma. Now he's going for a bit of a higher tech thing. He is pretty much spent everything for, that he got from LC on more resource processors, getting a lot of Q-Plasma. He wants to push fast tech, which I'm not surprised by at all. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is not going for fast tech so much. He's going... has gone an armory, only got a factory, no mech yet, so he's not going... Or he's getting a mech now, at the 304 mark. He might be going for a macrofab from this, but it's... Well, we'll see what happens. Faro coming from Gode, he knows what is going on, he knows what Cybernetic Pony is up to, and Gode is... Not apparently changing too much quite yet. Probably will be eventually, but at the moment he is remaining resolute in what he was planning on doing originally. The Faro is not going to do too well here. Gode is double checking the scouting. I'm not sure if he's going to be changing it up or not. Now, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, he is getting an armory. He's probably going to get machinery fairly soon. I'd rather just get early Marines and Special Ops to, he to help out fighting. Not sure if you're too worried, though. 
in all honesty, I think he probably is going for machinery, possibly machinery plus macrofab from the mech. See that it goes out. The Faro is able to scout in. Gode is able to see that Cybernetic Pony does have the early armory and going for early special ops, not getting tech quite yet, going for units first. Gode, on the other hand, he is going to be. Well, it's still unclear, honestly. He looks like he's sending out some units, but he's not going for a proxy, obviously. He has these Faro out. The Faro here is probably going to get undone with the blue time wave. I think that's just going to be changed up. I don't imagine that this is going to be too big of a deal for him. Now, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, he is actually... Well, it looks like after he beats that Faro, he goes around and starts to attack a bit. See, so yeah, the present that that Lancer actually is moving into Gota's base, so Cybernetic Pony can see what's going on. And actually, he is checking what's going on at the 426 mark. Does have both of his... His early imagery are hitting as well as the Lancer. Now, at this point, Gode is not actually... I mean, Gode, it would be obviously off for him to just let that happen. At his point of view, at the 314 mark, he does have everything in his base. He does have enough to start building up tech. Building up an Octopod if he has to. He is going for an Octo instead. I don't know if this is... It looks like he is, in fact, going for an intentional attack. Double, no, he's not. He is keeping that Octo at home. I was wondering why he would be doing that, because what you'd want to do is keep the Octo at home and then use that to rebuild the Seppi that you just used to build the Reef. And now the Lancer comes in. While well, Advanced Archer is being built at the 4 minute mark, a little bit earlier than it has been before, but that's not terribly surprising, especially given how little harassment's gone on. Cyber 90 Pony, on the other hand, just now getting Q-Plasma, has not gotten machinery, is focusing all of his Q-Plasma on Lancer, so he needs to get more Q-Plasma here to get a Macrofab and to get machinery if he wants to, or grounding if he's going for Twin Mars. It's the other possibility, of course. And from his point of view, he's actually doing a lot of damage to Gode. Gode, on the other hand, has plenty of time to respond. He's got a full two minutes from when Cybernetic Pony is fighting to actually respond to this, and looks like he isn't. However, Cybernetic Pony is blowing up. He's trying to destroy some of Gode's crates. This is something that Cybernetic Pony did a while ago, but hasn't actually done in a long time, is attack the crates. Because when you attack the crates, you just destroy your opponent's ability to expand there in the first place. There's, it's not even a matter of killing off their RPs. You just destroy the resources to begin with. Octopod's being set up. The One of them might be damaged by the Lancer in time. I, Cybernetic Pony is not paying attention to this, by the way. This is Gode's point of view we're looking at. Back to Cybernetic Pony's point of view. We see at the 537 mark. He has, from his point of view, dealt a lot of damage. Double checking back to the 304 mark at the unplayable past edge. And it looks like he's... He's not letting up at all. Destroying this expansion. Not sure if Gode is going to... Ma he's going to really care about that. I think he's more worried about his main base right now. An Octopod is coming up in time. However, this Octopod will defend against that Lancer. The Lancer's not moving in quickly enough. And that, that's going to stop the Lancer. It's going to stop everything, pretty much. Cybernetic Pony does think that he has a good position right now, but he doesn't anymore. As we can see off the timeline here, Cybernetic Pony, with the red time wave, is reducing the amount of damage he deals. But it's not... This time wave is not changing anything substantial. It's not adding damage. The blue time wave that's coming along behind this red time wave, that's what's going to make a difference. And Gole... He does have these Octopods out, but these are not the Octopods that we should be worried about. The Octopods we should be worried about were built much earlier. Were built around here, and that's where it's going to be a problem for the Lancer. Except Pony is not going to be able to have this Lancer last more than one extra iteration from here. However, he is... Oh, he is going for something... Pretty big from the looks of it. Or no, it's just just more units. Never mind. It's just Godet's construction, by the way. That wasn't... That was a mistake. That was Godet's construction. He is... Actually, not... Okay, this can't be right. Oh, there we go. Okay, Cybernetic Pony's point of view. This is further in the future, and Gode's point of view... Actually, this is after the blue time wave. It looks like he is not taking much damage. The Octopods... Discouraging... No, Cybernetic Pony's still attacking with the Lancer. It's going to be quite late, though. And no, actually, Gode is moving out. He's going to be attacking the Marine Special Ops that are destroying the crates here. They sh I don't think they're going to succeed in destroying that crate. No, they aren't. The Octopod's going to get there and... No, the Octopod's moved back to deal with the Lancer, and that will allow Cybernetic Pony to destroy this crate completely. Now, Cybernetic Pony does have a Macrofab up. It's done the... or will be done. It's going to be done by the five, six minute mark or so. The ground units upgrade, he's getting right now at the 535 mark. And we'll see he gets a few more techs, probably machinery and chronoporting soon after. Now, Gode, on the other hand, has enough money for chronoporting. He is just getting advanced structures at the 534 mark. He has delayed that tech to get the Octopods instead. Getting rid of the Lancer, no problem there, but he does need to get himself 
Corona Porting. He's probably going to get Corona Porting because that's just... Gode likes Corona Porting. He likes his... Perma cloning. Really, that's the thing he likes. Now, Cybernetic Pony, 541 mark. We're still waiting on him to get his tech up. Gode back at the 618 mark, or up at the 618 mark. Starting to shift over to Cube Plasma. He is definitely getting Corona Porting. Well, he's de getting Corona Porting. He's halfway through it, actually. And we'll be probably taking full advantage of that once it comes up. But for now, it's going to be just a bit of a waiting game. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, getting a couple more. There are the importers a little bit later than I expected, but they are here. Anyway, Mar tanks up. Twin Mars will be soon merged from those. Not sure if Cybernetic Pony is planning on making another. Is he making another Macrofab here? I'm not sure. Anyway, the that tech that was in Cybernetic Pony's line is gone. Just machinery and ground units. I'm a bit surprised he isn't making another Macrofab at this point. He does have a few units here. They are looking to expand. Let's see, are they going to expand? No, not not quite yet. Cybernetic Pony not focusing on these on that Marine and Special Ops yet. Probably will be pretty soon. And Gode going for Corona. He's got Corona Porting. Corona Porting these Octopods, and he's going to be attacking with them. Actually, Corona Porting them several times, getting a ton of Echo Ports in. Cybernetic Pony does eliminate one of the departures, though. Unwittingly, he got he gets rid of one of them, possibly two of them. Seeing as this first departure went through, and... Yep, Cybernetic Pony gets rid of two of them. I don't think he's going to... No, he's getting rid of the third. No, he isn't. He jumped back. He's not going to observe that third Corona Port departure. So there's going to be two Corona Port departures, and ultimately a one, but... Echoed Corona Port Departures anyway. And the arrival for both of them has arrived. So these these two arrivals here are ultimately going to be just one arrival. The departure has gone away, but... Gode still has a bit of a chance to wreak some havoc with this, with these Echo Corona Ports. And he's really pushing for this as well. Now Saturday Pony jumps back to when all the Octopods are coming back, and it looks like some of them are not actually attacking yet. So Gode's first Echo Corona Ports... Didn't do much, but these later ones are doing quite a lot. He is, or will be doing quite a lot. He is pushing everything in here. And Cybernetic Pony now making all the arrivals come up, rather than getting rid of the departures this time around. So bear in mind, all of these Octopods are the same Octopods twice, and not re ported Just the same Octopods chrono ported multiple times. This is just a weird deviation, because this is Echoes. These are Echoes of the Octopods here. It's going to deal a lot of damage and be fairly chaotic, but these are just Echoes. They are not actually ultimately going to happen. Although it looks like Gode might actually be trying to permaclone with this, and if he does, that is going to make quite the difference. Looks like... Well, looks like they might be. I don't think so, though. I think ultimately the arrivals will be... Yeah, the arrivals you're seeing here are being wiped off the timeline one by one. But it still is pushing Cybernetic Pony into a position that he thinks he is losing. He thinks... That Gode has far more of an army than he really does. And Cybernetic Pony doesn't have much to worry about. The Spire just being built for Gode, by the way. At the 920 mark, he's just now getting Pharopods. But these Echoed Octopods are a big thorn in Gode's side, or sorry, in Cybernetic Pony's side right now. That green time wave will be carrying the truth, but I don't know if Cybernetic Pony's going to last long enough for that to happen. And of course, Gode is going to be trying this over and over and over again, continuing to chronoport back these Echoed Octopods to make the death come even faster. That being said, Cybernetic Pony does have these two Marines here. The, rather the Marine and Special Ops, he still has stuff to work with. Uh, that's what the Marine and Special Ops here means. There is there is stuff to work with. Cybernetic Pony isn't dead. He's not going to suddenly lose the game because he lost all of his units. He hasn't lost all of his units. But now we see the Echo is a little bit weaker this time around. There still is the Chrono Porting, of course. I mean, Gode still has Chrono Porting. He still can really wreak havoc. But there's the last green time of iteration. Cybernetic Pony has pushed it away, and the Echoes have stopped. At least for now. I mean, Gode is going to send in more Corona Ports. He has tons of cash for it. He's actually sending back all these Echoed Octopods once again as Corona Ports. I, I don't know if Cybernetic Pony realizes what's going on and that he could just simply go forward and basically invalidate all the departures by observing them in advance. But the green time wave will be invalidating a lot of these departures. Not before the arrivals happen, though. Hitting the red time wave. And I know this is... I apologize. This is kind of confusing. It's the way Akron is sometimes. But yes, the red time wave will actually be hitting the arrivals before the departures go away. So, Cybernetic Pony still has to worry about the Echoes. Gode being quite clever with this, timing it just so, so that the pass, the time wave that invalidates the departure doesn't come in before the arrivals are stuck onto the timeline. And Cybernetic Pony really doesn't have much to work with. And at this point, Gode is aware of the expansion here, and Gode is going to be trying to do what he can to get rid of it, of course. He wants to obviously win the game. This is 
course, a finals game is very important to win. Winning is the goal, really, when it comes to games. Most games you try to win. This is one of them. However, the right time over here, that's where it's going to carry Gode apparent Gode is apparently destroying Cybernetic Pony's base. And Cybernetic Pony just now realizing what's going on, but probably also noticing that his stuff is dying to pretty much nothing. Because the Corona Ports are going to be a lot weird. There's only going to be two Octopods in the past rather than 14 or so. But even then, even then, Cybernetic Pony still has a lot to deal with here. And unfortunately, okay, this Farapod actually, quite fortunately for Cybernetic Pony, is not going to take him out. But I think... How is this going to work? The blue time of... No, Gode is still going for this. He's still pushing these arrivals in. I think he's trying to see if he can permaclone just by doing this. And Cybernetic Pony appears to be trying to observe this out and possibly get rid of it. I, really see if it. I don't think he's trying to get rid of it. I think he's trying to see what's going on. He might be trying to get rid of it, though. He might be trying to invalidate the stuff. He should be, because he's going to have to try. But at this point, it's really... I think I think some of these are going to be permacloned. These arrivals here that Saturday Pony is just going over, I think they might get permacloned. We'll see, though. It looks like it's just these here, but these fire pods, it doesn't matter. Saturday Pony throws in the towel, and that is game one to Gode. That will be... That's the first game. That was, well, that was a very interesting start to this tournament round, the finals round. Gode going for a lot of Echo Chrono porting. I don't think I've seen Echo Chrono porting used for months. So, well done, Gode. And I'll have game two for you guys shortly, so stay tuned. Welcome back, Akron fans, to Game 2 of Round Finals of the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament. This is Gode vs. Cybernetic Pony, and we're going to be on Snowblind. Let us start. So, Gode is starting out in the northwest corner of the map, playing as Grekham, of course, and Cybernetic Pony at the southeast, sorry, southwest corner, northeast, southwest. I was get that part confused. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony going for Grekham as well. So Grekham Mirror this time around, assuming no race switches, but... We'll see how that goes. Anyway, we have, well, everything just sort of starting up. Go to getting his economy going, Cybernetic Pony getting his economy going. And once we get up to about five or six LCs, RPs, then we'll know what's really happening. Cybernetic Pony is sending out his Arcticus over to Gode's base, and Gode isn't actually sending his over to Cybernetic Ponies. He's pretty confident he can scout out. I don't know if these games were played with or without Fog of War sound. I think they were played with Fog of War sounds. So sounds coming through Fog of War, because that was a setting beforehand, before it actually became a setting, so you could configure it. So they probably can hear each other, and Gode is probably relying on that. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, wants to see what's going on, and is any his Articus to fulfill that purpose, along with an Octo as well, which we'll get there beforehand. So yeah, that's... That is... there. Anyway, Octo will be coming in, it will just see the Species Selector, but Cybernetic Pony probably gonna guess that Gode is gonna go for Grekim. He'd be right in doing so once the Blue Time comes along, and Cybernetic Pony actually jumping behind it to see that Cybernetic Pony is gonna be fighting a Grekim Mirror. Once he sees that, we'll see what he's up to. I don't think he's got anything built. He just has LCRPs right now. Nothing else has been built so far, but once it is, then we'll have something to talk about. Gode, on the other hand, is going... Well, he's probably going to lose a bit to this Octo, but he's not... It doesn't matter so much. Saturday Pony actually jump back. Is he going for a Species Switch? Yes, he is! He's going for Vekir! Okay, so we do have a Species Switch instead. So Vekir, not Grekim for Cybernetic Pony. Probably going to go for fairly quick Zion Turchers, I would imagine. Actually, no, against Grekum? Hmm. Hard to say. Really a matter of whether or not they build Octopods. And given that Gode believes that Saturday Pony is going for Grekum, I don't think he's going to build too many. He might build one, and if he does, then Zion Pulsars wouldn't work early on. But if he doesn't, then Zion Pulsar Switch would actually be very effective. And as far as Gode is concerned, Saturday Pony is going for Grekum and not Vekir. Mind you, he'll find out soon enough what's exactly happening. And there we go. Cybernetic Pony, from his point of view, does see himself as playing Vekir, and Gode is just... He's going back as well. He is not species switching himself. He is sticking to Grekum. Wants to stay where he is, but Cybernetic Pony didn't feel too confident, apparently. And he's also prepared for the Seppi and Faro coming in. Does have a foundation, does have another Zion Veer... Or Zion Veer in base, another Zion Veer being produced. Foundation just near enough to heal up, and the Faro... 
Taking some damage, not yet hitting. It hadn't been ordered to at this point, but Gode is going to be... He's going to be changing that. No, no doubt about it. He's going to go here, change that order of the Faro, make an attack move instead of just a regular move. And definitely become aware that he needs to build an Octopod as soon as he can. Not sure if he's going to be able to do so too quickly, though. He's actually not in the best position just because the Faro here... I mean, that's one of the that's one of the news he needs to reproduce. And the Seppi... Where, I think the Seppi died already on the entry. So Gode, double checking from his point of view at the 207 mark, I mean, he has to jump back. If he jumps back to this bookmark, which he's probably going to do, I think he'll have a chance to rebuild a bit and get an Octopod. Defending against his Eye and Switch, but at this point, I'm not sure. Even going further back to that bookmark, looks like he does have a chance. He would be able to do it. He needs to move one of the RPs over here, though. I think he might be trying to... No, he's trying to build up, get more... There he is. Okay, now he's switching over to Q-Plasma. He's going to be getting an Octopod as soon as he can. Because he's going to need, he's going to need an Octopod to defend against the Depot. Defend against... He needs to defend this, and that's going to be tough. The Zion Pulsar's coming in here. That is the big problem. If those come in, those are going to destroy everything that Gode has. Actually, Gode doesn't even have an Octopod in time. Oh, no, maybe he does. He's two minutes down from Cybernetic Pony. He does have time to get an Octopod. He, he should be building one right now. I think he's going to start to build one right away. No, he's building more Octos. He's really pushing the timing. He can, though. He can get away with this. But Cybernetic Pony, from his point of view, getting a foundation just in case for extra healing. Coming in with the Zion Pulsar as well. That's going to be fairly powerful. Really, it's going to come down to when that Octopod comes up and how effective it is against foundation supported Zion. Three foundation supported Zion Pulsars. This is going to be tough. It's doable. Gode still has a chance. You can still get through this, but it's going to be... It's going to be tough. It's going to be a bit of an uphill battle. And he hasn't actually yet built it. From his point of view, 430 mark, he does have the money. He definitely has the cash. I don't know why he isn't building Octopods. He, he needs to do so. Actually, he needs to have done so a minute ago. Now, if not sooner, and sooner is an option. And Gode is going back to when sooner is an option, but not yet getting an Octopod. Not sure why. Cybernetic Pony does have, at this point, well, this point right now, the 254 mark. Depot is just getting constructed, and there's the Octopod. Three minute mark, we have an Octopod, probably going to get about four or five Octopods by the time the Zion Pulsars come in, just to finish them off. Cybernetic Pony, from his point of view, has destroyed Gode's base, but Gode is going to change that, or going to try at least. One Octopod up, another Octopod is forthcoming, and see how this goes. Two Zion Pulsars are coming in. A third one is under construction. Third one's just done, actually. All the Zion Veers return to the Zion Pulsars to speed up that construction. However, bad positioning there from Cybernetic Point. He needs to be careful about this. He needs to make sure he doesn't lose... He has to make sure he doesn't lose the Shin Veer here. Because that Shin Veer is for the foundation. He needs to not let it die. He's going to have to... And he is redirecting it. He's moving his path. But Gode is also intercepting. He's moving to intercept. Octopod coming in here is going to intercept this Shin... No, the Tez Veer first. The Shinveer needs to get past it, though. I don't... Will it be able to? It's... It should be able to. That's going to be five hits before it dies, and it's going to be able to get all the way to this foundation placement spot before it dies, from the looks of it. We'll see, though. Tethveer takes the brunt of the damage, ends up getting killed. The Shinveer has a few more hits. Three more... Two more hits. One more hit, and it's dead. But the foundation is up, and the Octopod... First Octopod has died. Further Octopods are going to have to retreat. Going to regroup. No reefs right now. Gode might build a reef just to support this. I don't know if he's going to do so. He is lifting up his Faro and Sebi for last-ditch attempt at support. Foundation is up. The Zion Pulsars are approaching. And Gode is, according to the game, on quite the clock. A minute and a half left to live. Let's see if he manages to pull this out, though. He is pushing forward. He is getting his Octopods in place to deal with the Zion Pulsars. And Zion Pulsars have the Foundation. The Octopods trying to get rid of it. They got it to half health, but... Kind of tough, though. One of the Zion Pulsars has gone down for no cost. The Foundation taking some damage, but still not quite going down. Cybernetic Pony, he is continuing to push out Zion Pulsars. Has more coming in, and once they're in, they are going to be that much harder to dislodge. This Foundation being very useful, but it's about to go down. One of the Zion Pulsars... Well, the second Zion Pulsar goes down. The third Zion Pulsar still getting healed up, but not quickly enough. All the Zion Pulsars go down, and Gode appears to defend this pretty well, getting rid of that Foundation. Cybernetic Pony, however... Getting another foundation. He's starting to push more foundations here. Adding both targets and healing potential. 
buying himself a bit of time, getting another Zion Pulsar in here. That is going to be... That's going to be it. Saturday Pony managed to turn this around. That second foundation there does it, and Gode throws in the towel. We have one to one in this best of five finals. So stay tuned. We're going to have game three in just a couple minutes. Welcome back, Akron fans. This is game three of the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament Finals between Gode and Cybernetic Pony. And it'll be having this match on Kratoria, which is an odd map. Odd map to say the least. We've seen it several times before, and we'll see it right now. Though admittedly, this tournament so far has been made of odd games. The first game had a lot of Echo Chrono porting. The second game had Race Switch, Zion, Pulsar Cheese. What will this game have? I don't know, but it'll probably involve the neutral teleporters, because... It usually does. Vekir coming up for Cybernetic Pony, and Gode is... What is he going for? He is going for Vekir as well. So apparently a Vekir Mirror is in the works. Assuming no Species Switch, but it looks like neither player is... Well, Cybernetic Pony might Species Switch. He's he's open to the possibility. He has the Species Selection happening at the 7 second mark, so he's he's got time. Gode, on the other hand, doesn't. Gode is definitely going for Vekir here. There's no way out of it for him. However... That is just... That's probably just fine for him. Probably doesn't feel like doing Species Switch, which is a little bit odd. Gode is not... He's not unfamiliar with Species Switching. He does it a fair amount. Usually CISO to Grekum. But admittedly, at this point, that Species Switch doesn't really work as well as it used to. I believe it used to work because you had... What was the thing? CISO to Grekum. I don't remember exactly what it was, honestly, that made that a decent switch, but he would often do that. However, looks like he's not going for a Vekir to crack him switch. He is sticking to Vekir. Cybernetic Pony might switch out once he scouts out, but he's just building the economy, getting five LCRPs, and not even scouting yet. Neither player at all pushing to scout. They're both just waiting, possibly just hearing out what their opponents are doing. Gode is about a minute down from Cybernetic Pony and about the same economically. One difference is Cybernetic Pony is pushing a bit forward. He is trying to claim the crates further towards his opponent, whereas... Gode is taking all the crates in the back. And taking L quick UP crates as well. So it looks like he's a bit faster tech than Cybernetic Pony is. Cybernetic Pony is going for mostly Liquid Crystal RPs, though he does have... Nope, that's it. Just Liquid Crystal. He is going for a quick depot, but... Not got a lot to support it. Might have been a bit of a mistake on his part. He probably is going to move this around. Gode, on the other hand, has a bit of a better economy to support those depots. So if it goes for an early depot, that's going to work out a lot better than it will for Cybernetic Pony right now. The 215 mark or so, Gode does not have enough me does not have enough <laughs> doesn't have liquid crystal for the foundation, let alone a depot. Just now has enough liquid crystal for that, but he looks like he's trying to really get his economy going. Pushing hard for economy, not going for fast tech at all. Cybernetic Pony is going for fast tech. And that is Well, that may work. Going for quick Zion Turcher, not sure what he's up against at this point. Knows it's not Grekin, probably, if he can hear through fog of war, but doesn't know whether it's CISO or Vekir, and against CISO, Zion Turcher definitely the way to go. Against Vekir, Zion Turcher is still powerful. Not as powerful because foundations are ubiquitous and they detect, but they're still pretty powerful. I mean, they are... They counter Zion Pulsars pretty well because of the whole art artillery against cloak units thing, but they... They're often more... They're more often used, I find, against CISO. The minute CISO has ATHCs, which are detectors, so... I don't know. They're a good choice. Zion Turks are a good choice in a Vecchio Mirror. So I agree with that choice. Gode, on the other hand, getting very early... Wow! Extremely early Gatech. Doesn't even have any vehicles yet. Doesn't have any foundations yet. Just going for rapid Gatech. I don't... I'm not sure. But I'm curious what's going to happen with that. Zion Turks is getting... Oh, okay. It's under construction. Getting done by about the 415 mark. Probably going to move out from there. But yeah, gay tech for Gode, what is he planning on doing with this? I'm really curious. He has no vehicles in play to make use of this. He has no... He's getting a foundation now. Maybe getting a slipgate from here. I have no idea. Getting a Debo, so he's just going for a quick skip. Apparently he just wants to get... that. It's an odd way of going about it. Being that you can get skip teleport per vehicle and you'd have like three or four skippable Zion Pulsars by the six minute mark, which is when we are now. But nope, going for gay tech first. 
And Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, he has his Zion Turcher just about done, the 415 mark. He is two minutes down from Gode. Gode is... Might have a bit of a surprise here. Though admittedly, Gode is also very far in the future. He's got five whole minutes of timeline where stuff can happen. He's not too worried about this. He does, however, have a Zion Turcher of his own. It does have skip teleport, and it is moving towards the Chronoporter here. Of course, neutral Chronoporters, which you actually almost never see used, but now we can, because this Zion Turcher is going to be able to make use of it. But, it, wait, is Gode, is Gode making use of this? Because he can. I'll have to see. I, I don't know if he's actually making use of it quite yet, but he definitely can. Well, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, does not have Gate Tech yet, so he couldn't take advantage of this. And Gode is... No, he's got Gate Tech, that's for sure. But yeah, very clever use of this, because we never see the neutral, neutral Chronoporters in this map are never used. The Teleporters are used a lot, because you can teleport no matter what. But Chronoporting requires that you have Gate Tech. You have to have gate tech for the chronoport command to even pop up. And now it's happened. And Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has sent in his... Well, he sent in his Zion Turcher. It does have skip teleport just from getting skip teleport on its own. And getting combos in the middle of the map, too. I actually didn't notice this. That Oh, no. Observation Hub. That's right. Because new version supports the Observation Hub. You go near it, and it gives you vision. Forgot about that. Beforehand, it actually wasn't useful. This Observation Hub was just decoration, but now in 1620, it's actually useful. But Cybernetic Pony going for the attack while Gode is chronoporting back and going for the Echo Chronoport as well. He's... We don't see it yet, though. The Green Time of will carry the Chronoport. I'm not sure what Gode is planning on doing with this. But Gate Tech is pretty secure. Cybernetic Pony has not attacked at a time when Gate Tech was not secure and looks like the Zion Church is going to be just pushing forward. Gate Tech has not been researched this far back, so it can't go for a re-chronoport uppercut, though it's in chronoport delay right now. But it cannot go for re chronoport uppercut just because of the fact that it doesn't have Gate Tech in re chronoport delay. But it looks like Gode is going to go for that anyway. That's actually what he's going for exactly. He's just waiting for the chronoport delay to wear off, and then from there he can just re chronoport again into the unplayable past and push right into Cybernetic Pony's base. And Cybernetic Pony at the at the 433 mark, he does have some defenses. He has a Zion Turcher in place. That one's just getting Gate Tech, so that's the one that moved out. And Gode now pushing more more and more Zion Turchers forward, or rather, down. Pushing them down in time. And is well it looks like he's going for the re chronoport, that's for sure. Once it's once it's ready, he hasn't gone for it yet. Might be doing some echoing of the units as well. Cybernetic Pony is somewhat prepared, but this is at the 7 minute mark. This is at the 6 minute mark, he's starting to get the Shin Churcher here. So he's prepared, but way too late. He's not expecting Gate Tech at all from the looks of it. I mean, I mean, no surprises there, because honestly, this Chronoporter is never used. The Chronoporters, you don't see them used, so I'm not surprised at all that Cybernetic Pony is not expecting this. And Gode, not yet gone for the re -chronoport. He could. And there we go, there's the re I was looking for. Moving back to the two-minute mark, and that is when that Zion Church is going to hit, which, at that point in time, I think... Well, let's see what Cybernetic Pony had. He had... He just got the Depot. And this Zion Church is now in place, and Cybernetic Pony has nothing to deal with this right now. Those neutral Chronoporters being used for, I think, the first time ever. But... Man, are they powerful. I don't think I've ever seen those used. I think no one really thought about that. Most of the time, you just go to the neutral teleporters and use those. But the neutral chronoporters, not something to be taken lightly, apparently. Certainly not. There's actually a lot of... Looks like quite a bit of re-chronoporting going on now. And Cybernetic Pony jumping back, realizing what's going on. Realizing the design turtle in his base. Two minutes into the unplayable past, and there's not much he can do about it. I think he might just GG right now. I'm not sure, though. He might still go for it. Might still see what he can do for defense. But I think he realizes that he really doesn't have much left. His economy is in shambles as a result of this. He's His only saving grace is that a lot of his RPs were at the front of his base, so he didn't actually get harassed in a centralized way. Gode, on the other hand, about the same time, would have had all of his RPs right in the back. Not that it matters. Somebody Pony not going for the harassment there. And Gode, jumping back to the 533 mark, he's... Well, not got anything to really deal with. This foundation's the only... No, this foundation's the only problem, and that's causing that Shin Veer to be a thorn in his side... As a Zion Veer, it still, it's a problem, and Cybernetic Pony way behind an economy. Has a fair amount of bank, but he doesn't have a whole lot of income. Still, a few more RPs out here, and ultimately, I think Gode may have just evened this out more than anything. However, the fact that he has Gate Tech 
is still pretty huge. And Cybernetic Pony also got Gay Tech. Looks like, or at least he had originally got Gay Tech. This is going to get Paradoxed out, though. Or, well, actually, it's going to be it's going to be a Paradox, that's for sure. Whether it gets Paradoxed out, we'll see. But it is definitely going to be a Paradox. Cybernetic Pony, further in the future, does have, or did have, Gay Tech. But now he doesn't, and now he might because the economy harassment... No, the economy harassment is still pretty consistent. I think Gode has this game. I don't think Cybernetic Pony has the economy to get Gatek and make this Chronoport ultimately work, especially since the Chronoport is in a bad position to actually defend anything with. So Cybernetic Pony is basically out. Trying his best to deal with this, but it's just not enough. It really isn't. Still, there are going to be a couple more games after this if... Cybernetic Pony wins the next one, then it's on game five. This is only game three, and the players are 1 1, so there's time. Cybernetic Pony can throw this game, or at least lose this game, just accept that got outplayed in this one and possibly go on to win the next one. He has another game to play after this one, at any rate. Now, Gode, on the other hand, actually relenting a bit on the Chronoports. A little bit surprising. I'm not sure if it's just that he's waiting for Cybernetic Pony to surrender. This is unlike him. I'm not sure why he, where he's building. Okay, there are a couple more Zion Churchers, so he's definitely not completely letting up. Looks like he might be trying to just do macroing close to the present. Getting a bunch of Zion Churchers when they're done, getting more Zion Churchers and so forth. Not quite though, he is however chronoporting them back and probably going to re chronoport them when he gets the chance. Now Cybernetic Pony on the other hand... Still has got a lot to deal with in the uppercut department. And does not have Gay Tech. He does have enough money actually at the Impossible Past Edge to get Gay Tech. But I'm not sure if he's confident he's going to be able to get away with it, especially since his economy has been heavily damaged as a result of all this. I mean, there's still a chance, but it's not the best chance. And Gode is going to send more and more units back here. He's going to get chronoboarded and re-chronoboarded, and ultimately it's not going to work out too well for him. I mean, that is for Cybernetic Pony, it's not going to work out too well for him. Gode just has the advantage due to gate tech. So once again, another bizarre game, another game of unexpected but really neat things happening. And there's another uppercut arrival we see happening just by the green time wave here. That is another important thing to point out, because that's still more damage being dealt, and Cybernetic Pony does not have a whole lot for dealing with this. Another Zion Veer going down. This Zion Torture is going to go down as well, and the Zion Veer... Cybernetic Pony Zion Veer is going to lose this fight just barely, but no! Going to win thanks to his Zion Torture support in the back, just barely getting Gota out of there. But once again... More and more units coming in, and Gode just setting up another re chronoport chain while also expanding. He's making sure he's not going to be just going for this one thing as an all in. He is expanding, getting a lot of Q Plasma just in case, getting a lot of, lot of Liquid Crystal as well, and Cybernetic Pony back at the Impelo Vast Edge. Okay, there's a bunch of Echo Chronoports coming in there for Gode. These are Echoes, by the way, but I think Cybernetic Pony might figure that this is it. But yeah, these are all Echoed. All the Chronoports here are Echoed, that's why the. Little pre chronoport lines here just messing up. It doesn't know how to deal with this. And Cybernetic Pony also doesn't really have much of a way to deal with this. He does have ways to deal with this, but the problem is when it destroys your base like this, even if it's an Echo, if it pushes the destruction into the unplayable past and then the recoveries in the unplayable past, that's still a lot of time your opponent has bought for themselves, if nothing else. That's why Echoes, Echo Attacks, and Echo Chronoports are so terrifying. They may not deal any permanent damage, but the damage they deal forces you to spend a lot more current energy than you normally would have to in order to fix it. Because you have a bunch of resources that you don't... You have a bunch of resources that basically started a stockpile that you could have spent and didn't. It's almost like a Chrono Bomb in a sense, but without actually being recommended research in the Chrono Bomb tech. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony setting up one last... One final last ditch attempt to get out of this, but Gode is sending more and more units. Even more... Well, see, these are the same ones we see already, but he is sending back all these Zion Turchers, and I think Cybernetic Pony is going to just... Well, he's trying to build what he can, building the foundations he can, seeing if he can get out of this, but the blue time of here is carrying pretty much his death. I think there might be permaclones from this. Not entirely sure. Gode is known for his permacloning. He really loves permacloning, so I'm imagining he's just going to go for that if he can. Admittedly, at this point, Cybernetic Pony... The red time of he has it, the blue time of he doesn't. He does have a backup foundation just in case. He might start to build up from there as well, seeing what he can get away with. And that is... 
This is game, I think. Oh, it's been game for a while, and got it. This blue timer coming along is going to finish... Yeah, it's probably going to finish it. I mean, we're looking at Gota's point of view, and we do see some damage being dealt to him, but that's before the blue time wave comes along. And with the blue time wave, is going to come death. For Cybernetic Pony, that is. And Gota's point of view, the blue time wave, that destruction's in the until past. Even if the green time wave comes along, by the time it updates, it'll be another minute behind, and Cybernetic Pony's going to have even less to work with, less time to build up stuff, and Gota is going to be... He's going to have built up all this time. Throughout all the time, he's gonna have built all this. And further Zion Churchers, just in case. Not letting up at all, and I think Cybernetic Pony, I expect to see GG anytime now. In fact, I'm a little bit surprised I haven't seen it yet. Gotta be honest. But Cybernetic Pony is a tenacious one. He is not throwing in the towel, and I think he's figured out, though, that he doesn't have much to work with. Like the green time up here, that that's carrying his death, and he knows it. GG, and we have. Game three coming to a close, and we'll have game four shortly, so stay tuned.